Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series, Quantum Chat, where in each episode, together with my special and returning guest, Marlon Muter, we will focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer to, as we can only speculate and guess, which is fun. Hello, Maren. It's great to have you back on my show. Thanks for joining me in this special mini-series of Quantum Chat. Hi, Anna. What do you have up your sleeve today for this question? (laughs) That's what I want to know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, today's question is, what are entity attachments and how we can protect ourselves from them? This is a curious topic which is not being talked about very often. While the issue itself is very common, more common than most people would realize. And I think that's because of some fear and apprehension linked to this issue. My understanding is that other energies or entities like to attach themselves to the human aura for a number of reasons. Some are karmic connections, others feed on negative energy generated by people, others still might be just lost on their spiritual journey and simply are seeking home. One thing is for sure, that we don't want any hitchhikers in our auric field, as they can affect our body and our mind, and so it's always a good idea to know how we can protect ourselves from such attachments and what to do once we have already got them. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are, I have really good news for everybody out there. (laughs) There's nothing attaching to you. There's nothing blood sucking your energy off of you, and you cannot be possessed. And there's Mm -hmm. a very good reason why this is Okay, please tell us. Okay, we're going to go back to this body. This body, remember, is a tool for our consciousness. It's an electromagnetic organism. Now, because it is electromagnetic organism, it works off of a specific frequency. And just like our power outlets, if we get too much energy within a power outlet, it surges. So we have surge protectors and all this kind of stuff. Because we can't allow that to come in. It would fry our computers. It would fry whatever else is around. Because our body works the same way, if we had an energy attached to us or to possess us, that would change the signature within this body and it would literally short circuit this body. You would literally die because it is created in such a manner that it actually radiates energy and energy field off of our body And that energy field off of our body acts like a uh, natural force field. It's a protective mechanism. It's a protective layer. That's why we can sense or feel somebody coming up from behind us. We can sense or feel heat without having to touch the hot stove. We can feel the heat of the stove and it warns us, don't get closer or you're going to get hurt. And that's because of our little force field that our body is creating naturally. When people say that they have entities attaching 
because they're negative people or people that are grumpy and mean and whatever else. And so energies like to suck off of that negative energy. They're looking for a reason why that person remains that way. And that it's just not because there's an entity out there causing it. Okay, that's interesting. Now, I do agree with your beautiful explanation of the electromagnetic nature of our aura. But on this issue, I have to say that I have a different view. I do believe that there are energies, whether you call them entity or what, what, whatever you call them. So energies other than our own can and do attach to our aura. And I know this from not just what I think or, or read somewhere, but from experience. I have met people that had this experience and I've also had in the past my personal experience. But if that's the case, how would you explain a scenario where a person just doesn't feel right and has a lot of negative thoughts, for example, has some energy drainage, and then after they have done something to detach and remove any energy attachments from the auric field using various techniques, all those symptoms go away. And it's not only where entities or other energies attached to negative people or to negativity, which you know can be the case, but especially to people who have the auric field damaged. And the key triggers that do that is substance abuse, such as smoking, drugs, alcohol abuse. They significantly weaken our auric field creating openings. And so those various entities and, and energies that are maybe even looking for home, as I said, you know, could be lost or are drawn to those people because they are seeking to draw energy from other beings, other, other consciousnesses. When they can find such an opening, that's an easy way for them to, to get attached. And once again, looking at the proof in the pudding, so to speak, but if that's not the case, how could you explain a complete difference in the person's feeling, in the person's health, mental or even physical, once that connection is severed? Okay, this is a very good question. And what I would say is the people that have gone through this and had a seance or however a medium or did a ceremony of sorts, to detach this entity, how many of them have another energy attached to them in the future? I don't know. Maybe some may have or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are they always feeling better and energized for the rest of their life? When we look at that, so now I'm going to look at it at a psychological standpoint. There's other things going on in that person's life that is doing this, that is causing them to feel like their energy is drained, that um, they have negative thoughts and things like this. That's a natural defense mechanism of our body. And the reason why I talk about our body so much is because that's the piece that's in this third dimensional plane. Our spirit or our consciousness is something else. It's not inside this body. So we look at that and we look at, okay, well, why did the ceremony work? Why did that help this situation? Because it created relevance to the individual. It made the person feel like they had someone listening to them, hearing their concerns, someone caring about them enough to help them through this or whatever it is. And it's, it's like a life preserver and it allows you to take a breath even if it just for a moment, it allows you to take a breath. It allows your body to kind of recalibrate and feel better and give you the strength to get through the situation or get through the environment you're in at that time. It is very easy to try to blame it on something else. It's like blaming a scapegoat. 
it takes the responsibility off of the individual and says, oh, this is what's happening. Or you've weakened your force field and you've allowed this to come in. And so now you're being blamed for allowing injury to happen to your body. And that's just not the case. Our force field that we're talking about keeps us protected from the environment, seen and unseen. And that's why I use that heat example under your hand. If you had an energy attached to you, then it would be short circuiting everything else. So if there's an energy attached to you, put your hand above about 10 inches above. Don't allow yourself to scold yourself over a hot stove. And if you can feel the heat, then we know that your force field is intact. So 10 inches, sorry, not 10 feet. But so that's a good way to know that your force field is still intact. It is still working. It is still keeping you safe. There are some times where an entity or a spirit might follow you around. And that's called an, a conscious attempt at communication. Most often, this is a loved one that has recently departed. They don't have a message for you. What they're trying to do is comfort you, to let you know that they're okay and that you are going to be okay. Um, once this body is done, there's no lost soul. There's no um, nobody sitting in recovery zone or anything like that because the only thing that is creating this barrier between here and the ethereal is, is your brain. And once your brain stops its animation, meaning that it ceases completely, there is no more veil and you are instantly in the ethereal space. So no one's lost and no one's confused. We do have things called spiritual imprinting. And this is where we leave energy behind at like a trail of energy. So imagine if we made our bed nice and tight and we laid down on that bed and then we sat up and we left the room, someone could come into that room and say, oh, someone laid on this bed. Well, spiritual energy can do the same way. And this is how we get specific kinds of haunting, like a repetitive haunting, footsteps walking up and down the stairs, an apparition of some sort that is repeating pattern so or staying in the same spot. That's called a spiritual imprinting. It's not a conscious attempt at communication. Um, and I know that we're starting to run out of time, and this is an awesome topic. I love it, and I know that other people love it too. But you you are safe from spiritual um, invaders. If you were invaded, if you had someone leeching off of you, you would definitely have a major major problem that a seance or a ceremony would not be able to help. <laughs> okay. You've also mentioned or perhaps implied the concept of responsibility by talking about blaming someone for particular behavior that has weakened the aura. And I'm very focused on the concept of responsibility because that's, again, something that escapes many people. And yes, guilt and blame in particular are not very productive, but there is a concept of responsibility, just like we need to take responsibility to take care of our physical body, of our mental health, take responsibility for our, our words and actions, because everything has consequences. And I, and I feel that when we say, yes, we can't blame everything for our outcomes and results that we are getting in our life, and that is linked with taking responsibility. So if someone is abusing uh, substances like alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, because they just don't care, and that has consequences, including, in my view, an impact on the health of our energy field, those people need to wake up to themselves and maybe there is some different explanation, as you said, uh, quite often psychological, behind those various states and, and even some physical uh, issues that they may be having. But this is another concept that we might unpack yeah. and explore on another episode. <laughs> I think it's a good one because uh, I think it will end up helping people more than, than they might think. So I, I agree with you completely. 
And just remember, we always have the ability to decide how we are going to react, respond, and behave to every single scenario and situation. And we don't need to escape through alcoholism and things like that, which we can talk about and the release of alcoholism, but it's not an entity that's causing that. There's, there's something else that we are trying to protect ourselves from, and that's not an entity. <laughs> Yes. Oh no, no. I didn't. I didn't say that that the entity causes someone to drink. What I'm saying is that when someone is on a path of substance abuse, oh yeah, which are basically toxins to the body, mm -hmm. this weakens the aura, which then invites entities yeah. or energies to get attached. So there you go. A brief explanation of what are entity attachments, or at least some food for thought. Thank you so much, Marin. It's been a pleasure to be speaking with you again, and we'll see you on the next edition of Quantum Chat. Thanks, Anna. And again, we really would love to hear your thoughts on this episode and the other episodes. If you have any questions that you want us to discuss, let us know by going to Anna's website, which you can see in these show notes here. Her website is going to have her email link in there. Go ahead and email her your thoughts, comments, and concerns. <laughs> I'll see you later. Thanks, Anna. Thank you so much. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well. <laughs>